What are your thoughts on the intersectionality of the silencing of our local journalists and local climate activists, especially when it comes to the government and big corporations or business owners? And my follow-up question to that is what measures can be taken to lessen this from happening? <laughs> wow. I, yeah, it's huge. It's, it's a quick, easy answer. No. Um, <laughs> I think the first is that, let, let me say one thing that we haven't talked about at all, which is that not only is the, the design of our, our technology platforms rewarding the bad, right? So the incentive structure is for lies, it's for, it, we're in the upside down, but beyond that, these very same tech companies that are being used to make, to pull, to kill the reputation of news organizations, are also the ones that are getting the advertising dollars, pesos. So it is power and money. So what, you ha what we're dealing with globally is that news organizations, the business model for news is dead. Advertising is dead largely, right? So the, the struggle for every news organization today is to find innovative ways of surviving so they can keep telling difficult stories, even as the attacks and harassment and killings of journalists increase, right? So that's what's happened over the last decade. So the first is the business model. We need to fix the business model. Again, part of the reason I, I put time, took time away from Rappler and put time into inter international fund for public interest media is because last year we raised about $50 million and that money is gonna be a stopgap measure that will be given in grants to news organizations in the global south. Right, so we need to make sure journalism survives while it is still looking for a business model. So that's, that's the first. The second, what's embedded in your question really is that that local journalism, well, for one, we know the red tagging has, has, you know, it's rampant and fear is rampant, but has fear lifted or not really? Not really. Not, not really. really. Here. Oh, yeah, of course, my gosh. Okay. So this requires, we organize, we, this requires both conscious organization and it requires money, business community. It's a tough one, right? So part of what happened, what we did, let, let me give you an example from Manila so that it's not so, I know, because this one is e an easy one. Um, Facts First PH was about 150 different groups, 16 news organizations, about 115, 116 civil society groups, NGOs, the church was part of it, business groups joined. The third layer were uh, eight academic institutions and the fourth layer were six legal groups, right? It was a whole of society approach to protect the facts. And what happened when the business community came in is it brought, uh, does anyone remember how EDSA really happened? The tipping point was a business leader, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I, just to go back to that, right? It cannot be, the, the attacks will happen, will always happen, unfortunately, because absolute power wants, you know, people who can get absolute power want absolute power. And as we're, we're pushing back, organization is the, the critical part, collaboration is the critical part. In the immediate short term, all hell broke loose. What are the stories that are being done right now? I know we're doing a bunch on Rappler, but what are the other things? What can we do, right? Because in the end, fear is a tool of tyrants. And, and silence is complicity. But don't be foolish either, right? Like, do this methodically. Because, because this time is such a critical time. I'm so sorry I don't have better words than that. 